Now in this video I wanted to kind of highlight uh, some of the oddball records that I've come across. And here's the standard ones. I mean this is normal. Uh, album uh, plays 33 and a third RPMs and then, then the 45s. This is what you normally see uh, in record stores today and what we've been you know, listening to for you know, 60, 70 years or so. But before that we had the 78s. So I picked up a few of these. I wanted to get some really old ones. And this one's from uh, 1909. 78s were made probably from uh, early part of the 20th century, maybe about, you know, maybe as early as 2000 or 1900, but 1905, I think they really started producing them. So this is a very early one, and this is one of the ones that's single sided. There's nothing on the back. That's what they did in the early days, and then uh, somewhere uh, around 2014 or 2013 or so, they started putting songs on both sides, and that's what this one is, if I can pick it up. Now that's still a single-sided one. Here's a 1913 one that has songs on both sides. So, But you can tell if you pick up one, it's a single-sided one. That's an early one. And these sound very tinny if you get them and uh, listen to them and you wonder what's wrong with them. And uh, that's kind of how they sounded because of the way they recorded them. Now here's a picture I got on my laptop of early recording studio. And they were recorded acoustically because they didn't have uh, any kind of amplifying vacuum tubes. So they just played in front of this big horn right here. You see all the guys hanging out in front here and the louder musicians would be in the back and the softer ones would be in the front and the singer would always be right in front of the horn. And they sang into this thing and played into this thing and it would uh, the sound would get concentrated down here to the end, which is cut off in the picture, but inside that little booth would be uh, where they would, uh, a little diaphragm would vibrate and uh, would um, be connected to the stylus which would cut a groove into a wax record and then they'd go through the electroplating process similar to what they do today to uh, create the stampers and make these records. Now, these are made out of shellac which is a uh, natural uh, material made from the black bug. It's like a bug secretion. They collect it and process it and uh, add some things to it. This lamp black which makes them black and uh, created records and that's what they did from uh, the early part of the 20th century, 1905 or so, until after World War II. So later on, about oh, 1925 or so, they started uh, recording what they called electrically. And you can see that in some of the labels of the records of the 20s. And they sounded much better. Instead of playing through the into the big horns like that, they actually had uh, real microphones that were would connect up to an amplifier and would uh, be recorded properly and mixed properly and everything. So these sounded much better. And then one of the 78 that I have I picked up a while ago was a, a modern one. This is uh, made on uh, uh, vinyl and uh, you, you play it with a normal stylus and it's in stereo, it sounds great. It just plays at 78 RPMs. Now, if you want to play these on a modern record player, you need to get a um, stylus and a cartridge which is set up to play the 78s because they have different groove, groove dimensions and a normal uh, 33 stylus will not play properly. Uh, 78. In fact, it could damage your stylus or damage the record. So make sure you have the right one. And I'll go ahead and play a few of these and I'll show you that. Alright, I have dismounted my normal Ortofon uh, 2M Red microgroove cartridge and put the uh, Ortofon 2M78 on there on the turntable. And I got the size set up for 10 inches, which is what these are, and speed at 78. Now you can't really use the automatic mechanism on these very early ones because there were no automatic record players in the early uh, 1909. So uh, there's no lead in groove and there's no lead out groove. So you have to manually place you know, the, uh, the needle 
on the record. Now I can go ahead and, and do it here. And you'll see it'll kind of work, but it, uh, you know, it won't start. You have to physically push the needle over into the groove and I'll start playing. You can hear how very tinny sounding this is. Even though it plays well. A lot of surface noise, uh, mid range only, and no bass and no good treble either. That's just kind of what they sounded like. I'll play the end of it here. See, it just kind of sits there and repeats until you lift the arm. So, automatic doesn't work. Let's try a, a later 78. Here is a uh, later production 78 RPM record. Uh, this is from 1938. This is from the uh, movie, the big broadcast of 1938. And the title is Thanks for the Memories. If anybody knows Bob Hope, remembers him, this was his uh, signature song that he would sing. And uh, I, don't know if he, I don't know if he was in that movie or not, but... So this one does have a lead-in groove. You can see the automatic mechanism worked um, on the lead-in, and there's a lead-out groove that causes it to... Uh, Reset to. Let me move it forward a little bit here. The singing comes in about halfway through the song. There we go. You could tell that had uh, better bass, better treble. Um, the electrically recorded ones just sounded much better. It's still a lot of surface noise, but uh, they weren't too bad. And here's a, a bit of an oddity. This is a modern 78. This is uh, old music. It's old ragtime uh, music, but it was recorded just a few years ago. And it's on a modern vinyl uh, record, and I had to switch the cartridge over to uh, the Micro Groove uh, cartridge instead of the old uh, 78 or the old shellac 78. And you can see, even though this is a relatively long song, it doesn't use up a lot of the record. Probably only half of it. Just because of the spacing of the grooves of uh, modern recordings. So, now this one, they actually didn't put a lead-in groove. So you have to kind of push the needle over here, the, or the tone arm, to get it to start. <laughs> So you can hear the sound is much better. You know. Of course, because it's a modern recording, uh, so it sounds as good as any, you know, uh, 33 or uh, 45 from today. So it's kind of fun to have this. It's an old, uh, old timey song, but. You know, ragtime was in the early 20th century. So, but it works well. That's it for the 78s. Let's move on to something else. All right, we're moving from the uh, fastest speed to the slowest speed. This is a uh, 16 and 2 thirds RPM record. Now, I was looking to collect one of these. Um, most of the ones you see now are uh, talking records. Um, a lot of, you know, uh, sermons, uh, religious sermons that are on records. Jimmy Swaggart, I think, was a big one. 
But I did find this one that has music, so I wanted to hear what music sounded like on the, on the 16 RPMs. And this one was made by, looks like it's produced for Magnavox, so I think it's probably a record that they sold with their record players back in the 50s and 60s. And I dated this by, um, since it is in stereo, and you can hear it, it is in stereo, so it had to be after 1958 because that's when stereo was uh, developed for LP records or you know, records of any type. And I said it's somewhere between 58 and 63 because 1963 is when they went away from this type of date thing here where they didn't have uh, zip codes yet. So um, that's how I kind of figured out what the date was. But we can go ahead and play this guy. So they say it's an hour of music. And it's got 16 songs per side. You can see them there. Go ahead and start this because it takes forever at 16 RPMs to get it to play. You know, since the automatic mechanism, of course, is driven off of the, uh, the spindle motor, um, you know, the slower you turn your record, the slower the tone arm goes, and vice versa. It flies around on 78 and barely moves on 16. Now this thing doesn't sound great, um, you know, with a slow speed, it's pretty, uh, you know, you can listen to it here a second. I don't know how well the sound comes across on the uh, camera, because the speakers are kind of far away, they're way over over there but uh, very little bass you know but it sounds okay so that's the 16 rpm record let's eject that show you how long it takes to get ejected <laughs> but it's fun to have one of these just if you have a, a turntable it'll play at 16 two-thirds rpm um, fun to have something to play at that speed. There we go. Uh, normally 45 RPM records look like this. 7 inch disc with a big hole. Here's a 45 that's 12 inches with a small hole. Uh, this is a demo record. This is actually uh, my brother one of his friends wrote and performed these songs. So let me, let me play this. Here we go with the 12 inch 45. So we need to set the speed on 45 RPMs. And normally, you know, this is down here on 7 inches for a, a 45, but we'll leave it at 12 inches since it's a 12 inch record. And we hit start. Of course, this has the disco beat because this is back when uh, disco music was real popular. And everybody was trying to make music for uh, the clubs. There we go. So that's the 12 inch 45. This one happens to have two songs on each side. And here is the uh, Beach Boys Holland album from uh, 1972. And in the record you got a regular 12 inch uh, disc and a 7 inch 33 and a third RPM disc. So here's what they look like. It has a regular album, and here's the little 7 inch 33, which is normally 7 inch discs are normally 45s. But um, let's go ahead and play this one. 
All right, so we need to set the speed at 33 and the size down at 7 inches. And if I remember right, this wasn't even any music. It was kind of a, a poem or something, but we'll play a little bit of it. does have a musical intro to it. There we go. 7-inch 33 record. Another oddball. Now for the uh, final uh, addition here in my oddball record collection are the old um, 10 inch 33's so these came out originally here's the oldest one I have this one is from 1948 it's one of the original Columbia releases which Columbia was the uh, company that developed the uh, 33 long playing record in fact they have this big LP logo they actually had a uh, copyright on that so uh, that's why these other companies didn't have LP in there. Um, well, they didn't have that symbol anyway. They did say it was a long play, but um, they couldn't use the LP unless they wanted to pay Columbia a royalty. Um, so this one, uh, these do play at uh, 33 and a third, and um, the reason they came out with these 10 inch discs initially is because that's what the 78s were and they figured people would accept them more readily than a larger record even though they did have 12 inch 78s which I unfortunately don't have any yet I'm still looking but um, you know these they had uh, four songs on each side normally this only has three that has four but they would uh, yeah, they play pretty well. Let me go ahead and set this up. So it's 33 and it's a 10 inch disc. And let's give it a start. And of course, this wasn't stereo yet. Stereo didn't come out until 50, 1958. But it was vinyl records and uh, they sound pretty good. This one's a little scratched up, but. You know, if you can get one in good shape, they sound just as good as a modern record. Unfortunately, this one, uh, I haven't found any of these in really good shape yet. This one was uh, from a high school um, if you can read the thing there but it's a high school library so that's the 10 inch 33 long playing micro groove what do they call it unbreakable too you know they had all these names for the new vinyl records it was a great improvement over the old shellac 78s so that's it. That's my collection of oddball records. I'm still looking to collect more, but that's all I have so far.